Uh, we are touching on spiritual growth. And I purposely began from I purposely began from looking at different books of the Bible. Just to look at uh, We began by looking at Ephesians chapter number 4. And we said in that that uh, let's look at that one once and then I will go. I just want to remind you what we did before. But for your information, Tuesday, the to we do in main is uploaded on the YouTube. And every Monday we put the sermon that we teach in first service on the YouTube. I am teaching about end times at length. In the first service, six to eight. For your information, that service is for everybody. Not only people are coming for the morning one. If you're hungry enough for the word of God, you can come. I'm exposing the book of Revelation. This morning, I did chapter number seven. I began from chapter four, five, six, seven. I've already done chapter one, two, three. So every Monday, what you see on our YouTube is the teaching that we do and there's something and there are people who specifically follow us on mondays because after i look at how many people have viewed there are so many they might not be of this church but they're learning so every tuesday we put the teaching that we do in the main service like now this one will be appearing on so if you want to know last two two sundays you can still get it now i am also remembering something if you google divine life.co.ke you will find us there divine life.co.ke and the audio teachings i have ever taught on the world <laughs> is there all the audio teachings you'll find i have put there over 250 teachings So, so you can go there and get the word of God. So I'm reading Ephesians chapter number 4 verse 12. I can begin from verse 11. The Bible says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. And verse 12, the Bible says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Three things. He says he gave the fivefold ministries. The teachers. The pastors. The evangelists. The prophets. And the apostles. Uh, we are going to have the ministry of apostle. We are always planning to bring up apostle that be here. He will come one day in Jesus name. Might be next month. I will work out. Let him come and teach us. These five ministries has been given. Number one, to do what? To perfect the saints. The word perfect simply means to mature. To mature somebody. He says, we have to access the ministry of these three people. The apostles, not the five of them, sorry. The apostles, the prophet, the, the evangelists, the pastors, and the, and the teachers. Now, I think for evangelists, you're already in the church. Maybe you don't need that. You've already been brought. That is the work of the evangelist. Pastor, you're under him. Prophets, I think we hardly access them. Although sometimes we, we meet, we hear them. On the TVs and elsewhere. Apostles, we need. You need to come. The Bible says a, a, an apostle is for our establishment. That's why we are really working out how, because Pastor Lai is also an apostle. We are, we are really praying, working out on how he comes here and preaches from this place. As powerful as that man is, so that we also become very powerful. Imagine Pastor Lai standing here. Although I know he doesn't want, he doesn't love to stand here. He normally goes down and he goes everywhere and preaches. Apostle. Even one day when they come and speak to your life there will be establishment 
In other words, you will not be shaking. Hmm? The, the responsibility of apostle is that we, they will be coming to speak to us. So the three things they do. Number one is they mature us in the things of God. I talk about maturity. I'm not began describing what maturity is. I'm trying to show you how God expects us. And then number two, it says for the work of ministry. Meaning everybody should serve God in his house. Everybody. Nobody should become, a, what do we call them? Spectators. Wakati watu wanacheza mpira, kuna wenye wanakaa pale, kazi yao ni kufanya ni? Utazama. Mutu wana practice vizuri, anakuja kwa uwanja. Amugina nani tu kuangalia vile mutu anacheza. Which one is better? Spectators wanapata pesa. Hey, whoa, they scream. By the end of the day, the man is going home with millions. He was, he's just entertained. We don't need spectators in this church. Everybody must be actively serving for the work of the ministry and then for the edifying of the body of Christ. The third thing is we should all involve ourselves in building the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is not only this church. Any other church, any other ministry that somebody can involve in, at least to make the work of God strong. That means every person who is born again should come to a point where he can contribute to the building of the house of God. And the house of God here, we are not talking about the buildings. We are talking about helping people grow or progress in the word of God. And then in verse 13 it says, Still we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stretch of, of the fullness of Christ. Asema mpaka wote tukuje tuwe na umoja katika kufahamu mafundisho ya Biblia. Njo leo kuna watu wengi wanaubiri hivi, mungina wanaubiri hivi. Kuna zema hii na manisha hii. Wakati tunanza kudizana maswali hapa. Hii ni mapenzi ya muku. Hiyo ni mapenzi ya mungu. Hiyo ni mapenzi ya mungu. Hiyo ina manisha. Uja fahamu. Like we read a verse. Yeah, we unanipatia yako. Mimi yangu mungine. So yote ina nitofauti. Lakini wakati tuna grow. When we grow. And we, we become of. Uh, we mature. The Bible says we all understand things in the same. The same way. We can read one verse and we can see the same thing. Remember what I read in the beginning. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not mine. So sometimes the way we read the Bible is the way we understand. And the way we understand is not the way God understands. But we are told, as we are taught when we sit down, our thinking will be aligned in line with the will of God. So that every time you think, you think what God expects of you. Every time you, speak, you begin speaking what God expects. And then he says until we all mature like Jesus. This is the most beautiful part of it. Until and to, and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse that. that. Back a word. Mature in the word of God. The Bible says here you can mature the way Jesus matured. You can, in fact, you can work in his capacity. The AP will come on a dam, come away. 100% being percent God. But he agreed with the word of God. So God has given all of us capacity to. So those three things. Kila moja wetu mwenye tuko kwa kanisa, kila mbacho mungu anatarijia, ni kukoma. That's why, somebody you know kwa kanisa atukwangi na, na exam. Tutafanya exam. Tutafanya exam. Tuta, kuna vile tutafanya exam. Ndiyo tujue kama tunaelekea mbele ama tumekuama mali. Then I read chapter 1 of First Peter last week from verse 18 until chapter 2 but I will only read chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 
chapter 1 from verse 18 to 20, the Bible talks about how we were born of the word of God. He says, you are born of the incorruptible things, which are the word, which is the, the word of God. So if the word of God gave birth to you, Paul says in verse 1 and 2, in verse 1 he says, he says, lay aside five things. Lay aside. This is common with people all who are not born again. Or who are, these things are common with people who are, born, who are not born again. But when you get born again, then some of these things might still be with you. Like one of them he says, malice. Kuwazia maovu watu. Malicious thinking. Malicious talk. Malicious action. He says, malicious. Ujui ni kwa nini unapangia mtu mabaya? Hii kutu kwa moyo wako. He says, malice. He says, put aside malice. Na ni kweli because unajua wakati kile kilingia katika asidi yake ni maovu. Evil. When man fell, evil entered his heart. So naturally there's a way evil works in you towards somebody else. Naturally. Hata umeukoka kiwango gani? wakati mwingine unakuta tu kifanya hivyo but he says watch you yondoke number 2 he says all guile guile is a uh, uh, guile is planning evil for somebody but appearing to be very good to that person that's guile Una mabaya na maovu kwa ajili ya mtu fulani lakini ukikutana na yeye unajifanya wewe ni mzuri sana kwake He says put aside that number 3 hypocrisies hypocrisies ni I know hypocrisies where you want to appear what you are not. Mwata kujionyesha jinsi ambavyo hauko. And this is true with every human beings. Kuna mali tunakuwa wanasemanga jasu. Unafiki. Ile ya kujionyesha kwa ukos. Uko na mnafulani lakini ukweli ni kwamba wewe uko tofauti na hiyo like a good example Jesus is giving to of, uh, uh, to Pharisees he says they preach good things but they do evil in fact Jesus told his disciples if you are to listen to them don't do what they do do what they say mufanye kile wanasema si kile wana wanafanya hypocrisies the other one is envy 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 uh, envy is uh, never wanting anybody to succeed except you wewe tu si mtu mwingine a good example is isaac the bible says he works great and became mighty. Chapter 26 of Genesis. And the Bible says the Philistines envied him. Alichimba kisima akapata maji. Because there are too much envy against him. Wale mfukuza hapo. Akaenda kuchimba ngini. Waka mfukuza pia hapo. Whatever he gets, nobody should. Whatever you get, nobody should get. That is envy. And the truth is, when Paul says, look at these things, it says it's there. And then the fifth thing is evil speakings. Speaking evil. He says, if you want to grow spiritually, remove these five things from your system. Otherwise, there's no growth. And then he says, as newborn babes desire 
the sincere milk of the word that you may grow by. In fact, this is what causes people not to have appetite for the word of God. We spoke at length last week. Hii kiwa ndani yako unafikiria mabaya kwa mtu fulani hautawahi kuwa na nafasi ya kuweka neno la Mungu ndani yako. The word of God and evil cannot stay together. So because the evil is already reigning in somebody's heart, it pushed away the word of God. Now, I want to go into today's teaching. I am doing this intentionally because njoo wengine wetu mnazasema mumesahau tulijifunza nini last week. I have read some other version, but I don't want to go there. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter number 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Now, I want to give you the background of the book of Hebrews. Ndako apatia kwa nini hiki kitakuwa? Na nani aliandika? I think mwenye aliandika ni Paulo tu, hakuna mtu mwingine. Anajua wa theology wa theology wa jaa aja kubaliana mwenye aliandika but the truth is Paul is the one who wrote it if you look at the way he reasons and what he does now hebrews hebrews uh, the word hebrews the word hebrews is what we have read in chapter number 2 of the book of exodus the hebrews the hebrews are the jews in other words They are called Hebrews. It is that word is from from the Old Testament because the truth is they have been living under the Old Testament these people. So they are called Hebrews. In fact Hebrews is a tribe. In the New Testament we call them Jews. So the book was specifically addressed to Jews. And Paul specifically addressed this book to Jews. Jews have been given the book of the law of Moses. And they have been living all their life basing everything they do, they think, they understand on what Moses said. Everything. But you know, in chapter number 18 of Deuteronomy verse 15, Moses asked them Moses asked them and he spoke to them in fact he prophesied about Jesus ah uh, Peter speaks about it in chapter number 3 chapter number 3 of the book of facts as we move downwards he speaks about that let me read that for you Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 <laughs> The Lord thy God up unto you a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me and to him you shall hear in him He says God will raise for you a prophet like me hear him Now God confirmed the same word when the disciples were on the mount of transfiguration. In chapter number 17 of the book of Matthew. When Jesus was transfigured before them. Those who were there were three. Peter, James, and John. These are the leaders of the early church. Jesus went with them intentionally on the mountain and for information separately Jesus has taken them and prayed with them and every time Jesus takes them to go for prayer something unique happens heaven opens up and these three people will see what God is saying like in this place bible says Moses appeared Elijah appeared And on that mountain they discussed the death of Jesus Christ. And the three disciples are there seeing what discussion is happening. 
Peter rose up and says, why can't we build a tent for each one of you here? For Moses, Elijah, and for? May God lead us in that kind of prayer. Imagine you pray and heavens come down with some malaikas and some people who died some years ago. Now God has sent them. You sit down and discuss about what will happen to you here. After that discussion, the Bible says a voice came from above saying what? This is my son. Listen to him. It's the same thing that Moses is saying here. God will raise a prophet from among you. From among you. He's telling the Jews. Listen to him. But instead of listening to Jesus. When he came. They continued with the law of Moses. They continued with the law of Moses. Now. For them that believe in Jesus, they become outcasts. Everybody is against them. Persecution is so hot. So even them that are born again, they fear and they just get back. They fear persecution. They fear all these things. And they drift back where? You know, until the fear of man dies in you, you don't know anybody in the world. You don't know God. Hmm. Until the fear of man and people dies in you, you, will nev you have never known God. Because one of the things that is causing Paul to write this book is trying to address people who instead of fearing God, they are fearing who? They fear people. Many of them drifted back into the Jews or into the, into the Mosaic law. Because they fear rejection. They fear what people say. And uh, instead of growing up, what, what happened? They could not move anywhere. They could not move. They are just there. And it is very painful the way God addresses these things here. Very painful the way God speaks in this place. Very painful. Uh, because of those fears, many of them, yes, they have believed in Jesus. But they cannot express their faith in Jesus because of the fear in the environment. Many of them have believed secretly, but they cannot confess, they cannot go to fellowship, they cannot go to, in chapter number 10 of the same book, verse 24 and 25, yeah, the Bible says, read for you there, I want to show you how many of them were not really going to How many of them were not going to to his, uh, to fellowships because they feared? Chapter ten of Hebrews, verse twenty-four and five. Even they fear going to fellowship. And let us consider one another to provoke and to love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. He's saying, provoke towards, provoke one another towards love and good works. Be meeting. He says, some of you have stopped coming to meeting. Encourage even them that are not coming to meetings. The truth is they cannot come to meetings because of persecution. There's somebody somewhere who will report them. They have gone to the meetings. 
if you look at chapter number nine of the book of john one of the things you realize is when that man who was blind was healed pharisees are against anything about jesus pharisees are against anything about jesus even when he does miracles, they say nobody should speak about it. So the parents were asked, did this man, this son of yours, was he born blind? What did they say? Yes, he was born blind. But how he is healed, we don't know. They don't want to speak about Jesus because whenever you try to praise Jesus, you'd be an outcast. Ni kama tu sasa hizi kama kwa hii hii kabila yetu you know some of us are, you know, some of our tribes you must adhere to the rules and regulation of the tribes if not you'll be an outcast hata leo ni hivyo hata kwa hii zima kabila zingine zetu if you have to do everything the kabila inataka usipofanya ni nini Sipofanya, hakuna mtu nakutambua. One day I heard my mom say, tumeulizu wata to see why greet. There's another lady, I don't know whether she was an out, I think they come only two point. Hata mtu asiwasalimie, nobody among the Burgess. It's something like that. So that now, uh, so in a manisha might be in a bidu, Utoe fine fulani ndio wakusame and then you beg them have done wrong that is how things were it was that hebrews it was that hard for hebrews to believe in Jesus. and when this book was written wakati waliandika hii kitabu they were trying to convince hata kama shida ni kubwa Afadhali umie waamini Kristo. Ukule hiyo shida. Kama kuna kukula shida. Hata kama utakufa ufanye nini? Ukufe. You know one of the truth is this that uh, people who have not known God much they fear people believers who have not grown much spiritually they fear people more than God. This is one of the characteristics of immature believers. You want to know more what people say than what God says. You must come out of that level. And I'm not saying that sometimes if what people say is in line with what the word of God says it's true as well. But many a times crowds are always outside the will of God. And they want to force you. Huh? They force you into their ways, which is not the way of God. So Paul is trying to encourage them. I know. In fact, when you read all the book of it, maybe one day we'll expose it. Expose it. When we when read the whole of that book, you realize that he's trying to show them. Look at, look at Moses and look at Jesus. Who is to be followed? He puts for them, look at Jesus is like this. Moses is like this. What did Moses bring? The sacrifices. Which has to be done every, every year. You have to sacrifice something for your sin. The one of Jesus, he did once and for all. You don't need to sacrifice anything. He's trying to, if you read the whole book, he's trying to explain to them. Why? He didn't grow. Ndio kuna wakati mwingi tunaona watu wanasoma hii kitabu wanaanza ku wanaanza ku kuangalia although kweli ni kuna vile sometimes sisi pia wakati tumekaa kwa kanisa miaka nyingi badala ya kuku grow tumebaki pale pale because now you what read you will hear it's good for you to understand the background the background 
background background calls that fear of people and everything this is what it cost let's go to chapter 5 of Hebrews verse 11 Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11 the Bible says it's talking about uh, these are people who, are, who came to salvation might be just for the sake of uh, for us let me begin from verse 1 so that you understand the context for every high priest taken from among men is for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin he says this is now the Old Testament they are calling it Aaronic priesthood Aaronic priesthood they say uh, one man is chosen among others so that this man will be offering gifts and sacrifices for sin one man is chosen so that he does this who can have compassion on the ignorant and on that that on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity and by reason here by of the or, uh, and by reason here of he taught he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sins so he's saying who can have compassion on an ignorant person yule maya ameamua kutojua vitu ama kutopata marifa nani atam nani atakuwa na huruma kwake and the truth is is nobody like some people who have refused to go to school and they're suffering today ama wamekuwa tu kuna vile wamekuwa responsible maisha yao yakakuwa mbaya sasa nani atawahurumia si ataishi tu vile yako the thing sometimes this priesthood this high priest can be just a person who cannot understand something is also in the same scene which is sacrificing for others also in other words is is part of the problem even as he's serving them and no man takes his honor unto himself but he does his call of god as was Aaron. hakuna mwenye atajipa heshima kama mungu hajamuita you see now is comparing the priesthood of Aaron to the one of Jesus now in verse 5 he says so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest but he that said unto him thou art my son today have I begotten thee and as he said also in another place that thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek now Paul is trying to is saying God is the one who said to Jesus you are my son today I have begotten thee that is when Jesus rose from the dead that God called him in that name and that is the time he was made the high priest and here he says and as he also said in another place that thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek now this one you find it in the book of Psalms because David has said it Paul is saying for Jesus God has already predicted Somebody to read for me at uh, chapter number 110 of, of Psalms. I think it should be there. David has said, so Paul is trying to David it should be in 110 of Psalms. I think you'll find there. Now he's saying Jesus has been appointed by God. Jesus has been predestined to become a high priest. You know he's trying to compare the two. Look at the first priest, high priest. He is he sins like you sin. And he will go and sacrifice. But look at Jesus. 
He's a priest after the order of Melchizedek. You find Melchizedek in chapter number 14 of um, Genesis where Abraham gave him the tithe. And that is how, how tithe began. But David confirms. Is it there? Is it the same thing? Yes, yeah, Psalms 110. What does it say? This Lord has said to my Lord. Huh? That is so David is speaking. Thank you. He says, The Lord has said to my Lord. Who's, who is my Lord? My Lord is Jesus. He says, The Lord has said to my Lord. You know what the Father has said to Jesus? And then he brings that aspect. Even when you reach chapter 2 of Psalms, so much about Jesus before it happened. So here, Paul is quoting what David said. And he said now, Jesus has already been chosen. Has already been predestined to become a priest. Who in the days of his flesh, when he has offered up prayers and supplication with the stroke strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was hard in that he feared. The Bible says you see what how he screamed on the, on, the, on the cross. Or before even he went to cross in the garden of Gethsemane. How he strongly prayed and cried to God. Because he was going to thou he, he was as thou he was a son yet he obedience by the things which he suffered. Being a son, he says, Jesus learned whatever his obedience to suffering. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus is this much qualified to be your high priest than the ironic high priest. You see, these are just behaving like Galatians. They know the truth, but they are always drifting back into the law. And the truth is, even today, many believers are like that. Because they have not been taught well, they are thinking like the Old Testament people. Like when somebody is always crying, I am a sinner. God have mercy on me. I am not worthy before you. God is... And I make this statement. I'll shock you, but it's the truth. God is tired of that. And he hates that. Why are you still a sinner? Why are you still feeling un unworthy? Why are you? Because you're not so mature. You don't understand many things. He came up to Totan and Jikojolea kila siku. Ukikoma utachana na iyo iyo yale ambao una, unaenda kuita kuomba mungu. Ukimuambia ni, ni na, natubu natubu. Kila ambacho kita kuweka huru na tabia ambayo umechukia unayofanya kila siku ni neno. Na kama uta kuwa na nafasi ya kusikiza neno utaendelea kwa iyo kitu unafanya utaendelea tu kusema mimi ni Mimi staili mbele yako mimi ni mwenye dhambi. Lakini Kristo si alikuja kuondoa dhambi. Na kwa nini kila mara unamwambia Mungu ni mimi ni mwenye dhambi? Do you think God is pleased to hear that one? Do you think God said 
settle the problem of sin once for all and you come every morning before him i am sinner i'm not worthy before you have mercy you begin crying you just see how you're joking <laughs> when you sit under the teaching of the word of god it changes the way you you think until you begin doing something different So these are the people who are always drifting back into the Old Testament. It's time to compare. Look at Aaronic priesthood. They are sinful. Even as they are offering. One of the things that happen, happens is every year no once they go to do offering for all the whole nation. What happens is that wakati wanaingia kwa holy of holies miguu yao inafungwa na wanaweka kengele hapo chini akitembea wanasikia kengele so that akiingia huko ndani atoe hiyo dhabihu ya dhambi kama ye mwenyewe ni mwenye dhambi atakufa hapo ndani hakuna mmoja atangia pale watafanya ni watamvuruta kama hawatasikia kengele ikiendelea kulia wanajua mjamaa ameenda the man is died then wanamvuruta wanamtoa nje wanachagua mwingine sasa Paulo anajaribu kuwauliza kwa kuonyesha huyu pia ni mwenye dhambi lakini kuna mwingine mwenye si mwenye dhambi there's another one who is not a sinner God has appointed him and he is the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek why can't you believe in him the environment they are always going back there and that's why he says now in verse 11 of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing my goodness Paul anasema tuna mengi ya kuwafundisha lakini kwa sababu hamna uwezo wa kupata ili neno lote imebidi tu tunyamaze hmm? of whom We have many things to say and hard to be heard seeing you are dull of hearing. He says, yale ambayo nataka kusema inaweza kuwa ngumu lakini naogopa tu inafika mahali niache tu kuongea kwa sababu nyinyi ni amufahamu dull of hearing spiritual sleepiness. you are that capacity to receive much of what i have for you i want to teach you you don't have capacity you don't have enough room for that it's painful the truth is it's painful as far as god is concerned it's painful you know what happens when god has a lot to do and the people are not ready for it that generation will be destroyed what god want to do cannot be done in the environment and simply because people are dull of hearing i can mark it right now that is the set we are in and we will sit there we don't want to come and learn the word of god we will sit there and speaking about how great muslims are and how they are moving and for them they have time to pray and to come and listen to the word of god it's painful nasema ni kuna mengi ya kuwafundisha lakini amuko tayari na yale mafundisho nitaleta ni kama itawaumiza nikiwaletea and then he says for when for the time you ought to be teachers you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat sema wakati mungefaa kuwa walimu mnahitaji mufundishwe mafundisho ya kimsingi ya biblia wakati mungefaa kukula bones eh? when you have to eat meat what are you doing you are only swallowing milk in other words we see ina manisha kuna mafundisho mwingine uwezo kwa watu let me take an example of rema 
rema ukimwambia wacha ataanza kulia Yesu mwambie tu wacha macho anapiga duru Hebu jaribu kufundisha ukweli kwa kanisa zingine na hafa chake ni jiti umesimama hmm? kwa sababu ya nani ulienda ku preach those are babies talking Oja na mile si jere kumbare. Look at your life and see if it is wrong. Why don't you change? Hmm? Hata kama nimesimama hapa kukugonga. <laughs> kama kama wengi wanasema. Na kama kile nimesoma ni ukweli la neno na unajua maisha yako hayambatani na vile Biblia inasema si ubadilishe. Si ndio? And that's why I think is you see the challenge with this other church is because everybody kila siku kuna mtu tofauti anafundisha. So mwingine akikuja leo might be akona shida na mtu fulani anaachilia risasi. Inagonga <laughs> nani? Mtu fulani. So next time pia ukipewa hata we unaachilia. So uh, pulpit inakuwa mahali ambapo watu wana wanapigana. But you see here Paulo anasema kwa sababu hamtaweza mnataka tu mpembelezwe you know a baby has always to be pembelezed I, I, i don't know if that is what is there ndoto lazima apembelezwe kila tafadhali tafadhali anasema saizi mungefaa kwa mkifunza wengine na mkikula nyama nyama these are heavy teachings and the truth of the matter is jesus is not pleased with people who are babies all true ilifika mahali alikuwa alikuwa na wanafunzi sabini baada kukana yeye kwa kwao na muda akaanza kuachilia mafundisho some heavy teachings the bible say, says many of them left chapter number 6 of john from verse 60 begin reading you'll see that in verse 68 in 67 he turned around and asked them wengine wamerudi hata nyinyi mnataka kurudi wale 10 wawili walisema aje paulo aka petro akasema nini una neno la uzima twende wapi Yuzi Paulo Petro hata akiambiwa shetani wewe aweza akasema Yesu amenitukana Basi akiambia mtu shetani itakuwa je leo <laughs> e, si kanisa ina mtu anabadilisha kanisa The following day Paul is saying here Hmm? Saizi mungefaa kwa mnafundisha wengine lakini mumebaki nyuma. Lakini see for them they have there's some truth in that because kuna kule kuogopa persecution. Na unajua persecution hiyo siku unaweza weko juu ya msalaba. Lakini sasa leo shida yetu ni nini yenye tatukui kiroho? What is our problem? The truth is a time comes when this opportunity that we have to learn the word of God is removed. Utakuta umepoteza fursa yenye Mungu amekupatia. In chapter number 3 of Ecclesiastes the Bible says The rest is not to the Uh-huh. Can continue. but time and chance happens to every man Simu mwenye anakimbia sana ndio atashinda and then there's another part i'm forgetting and then it says time and chance happens to all in other words kila mwanadamu ana fursa ya kufaulu lakini wengine wanapoteza hiyo fursa and many times there's also what happens in the church ile wakati like one of the things i realized is that uh, When somebody is young already youth like many of us here we have time right now. And that time God gives you you have to use it to grow spiritual. Itafika mahali hautakuwa na hiyo. Although sasa ukweli ni 
ni pia kwa nini au usikuwe na wakati ni kwa sababu many times you see when you are spiritually young you don't value the things of god you don't you don't value you don't value and it's a hard say to say and let me make it very clear here in the name of jesus when mtoto anaisha unajua anaishi vile anajua And many times mtoto anajiweka kwa shida kila wakati anapiga tu nduru woo anapiga anaenda anaguza maji sorry moto anapiga nduru akirudi anaenda anaweka mkono kwa chai yenye iko hot anapiga nduru anarudi <laughs> anatembea kwa matope pap ameanguka mtoto many believers live like that and that's god why let me make it very clear here If things are not working for you the way you expect it's because you have not grown. And many of the things that uh happens in your life is happening in line with your faith. The day your faith is strengthened you will clearly access what the Bible says the way it says. So si useme Mungu ndio no vile huko ni imani yako ndio ina uwezo wa kukufanya uishi hiyo kiwango. Na kiwango yenye unaishi might be haiambatani na vile unasema. Na usi usilaumu Mungu. Shida ikikuja ina una unaigongana nayo kulingana na imani yako. Na ile kimaana imani yako haiwezi utapata God you said that why is this happening to me? God you said that why is this happening to me? You see mtu mwenye amekomaa kama anajua kuna uwezo wa kufanya mabadiliko hata kama ni moja aanze kushangaa nini itafanyika ama aanze kulia. When you also we become of faith we grow in faith. We become strong. We don't tell God do something for us we do it ourselves. If there is sickness in my body I have ability to get out of my body and it dies This truth I have to say because it is the truth I'm praying for a, another girl another lady she's uh, she's a bit of L she's from PC PCA chat There's a time we prayed for one she got healed and then they called me to pray for this one. Huyu sasa amelazwa miaka moja na nusu kwa nyumba. I went there to pray for her. Two days I was there before the conference began. And eh Ajawai chikilia mambo ya Mungu seriously. Odok Ah mafundisho kama haya yenye She's really, she's really struggling in pain. The first day I came there, siku kwanza nilikanyanga pale. In fact, the first question I asked her is this. Kulingana na wewe hii magonjwa ikoaje? Akasema hii magonjwa yamenitesa hapa menitesa miaka moja na nusu she began telling me how she was operated on baada hii ni hii baada hii ni hii and then an account of disparate mwenye ashapoteza to mind kabisa ya kuishi as for speaking to her i told her god heals you in line with your faith if you don't believe god is strong enough to remove this sickness from you it becomes hard for god to heal you your faith should be strong in god more than the strength of the sea sickness to finish you it is hard but it's true and i told her ukaa hapa kutaka tu kuhurumiwa na kila mtu hapana lazima ujue pia 
una jukumu ya kumaliza hii ugonjwa ndani ya maisha yako lazima ubadilishe vile unaongea kila siku i'm sending a divine confession divine health confession kila asubuhi badilisha vile unaongea nena ushindi juu ya the second day i came she in fact she was smiling uliniambia nisilielie sasa nimeacha now she is reading that thing she is speaking she is reading and then the, the son asked her when will you come out of this bed mimi sijui kamwambia kama ujui kupia juu very hard yeah what is true when you make up pia umeshutuka that day nilitoka huko kabla hajaniambia the second day i came and i asked her how long do you want to stay here because lazima ajue mungu ana uwezo wa kumondoa hapo you know it means it's like she doesn't have any belief in god any she believes more in sickness than in god na kwa nini hivyo hana time ya neno la mungu na vile anaishi anaishi kulingana na imani yake na Mungu hana chochote ya kuapologize hapo many believers are like that Mungu kwa nini sipati ikitu kwa nini sipati you know ndio unajua wakati unakomaa unajua kila kitu unayohitaji umepewa and then unasimama unaanza kusema nini i have this i have that I am you see the way you because you begin now talking what God says and the Bible says you see when you confess what he has said in his word you will have it but even when you confess weakness you will still have it so shida ni nani amejileta ni Mungu kweli si Mungu so when we don't grow spiritually we live like children And you know self children are very selfish. Very selfish. Rema anakuja mbio anakuchukulia biscuits. Ukijaribu kumchukulia anakataa. Ah na nani alimpatia? Ni mimi tu. Ah ah. You cannot. Because sometimes hata aweza kafungua ajui kufungua. Unajaribu kunataka kumfungulia anakataa na atakaa pale for 10 minutes akifanya tu hivi and then just watch and yes we like that you make atuna favor hapa amepatia remand hapo yenye ungefaa kuondoa favor amefungua yake amekula yeye yako tu pale that's how sometimes you behave before god umekaa tu pale na vitu zako shida yako umekwama uh, na hutahitaji we must grow out of that ile siku yenye wewe sasa utakomaa utaanza kuishi kulingana na vile what i'm saying is you see whether umekomaa ama hujakomaa kuna vile unaishi i hope we are together kama umekomaa ama hujakomaa si unai unaendelea tu kuishi hmm? whether a child is grown or not grown there's a way a perspective mtoto ako nayo na mpaka akomae ataendelea tu kufanya hivi like now for for like watu kama mrema na wengine wanampiga nduru wanalia niko na hii shida niko na hii unakuja mbio unakuta shida penye ako nayo kuna siku alienda kwa mifere, kwa, kwa tank hapo hajawahi jua kuna maji hapo maji alijifungulia alipiga nduru tukatoka ama vifaa alitoka mbio kwa nyumba hmm? kama na uwezo sengefunga tu Paul is saying here munaendelea kuwa kutafuta tu verse 3 says for everyone that uses milk is and is skillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe 
Mwenye ajawai fahamu vile Mungu amewafanya watakatifu. Ni wachanga katika imani. And that's why me I am always against this thing. I am unworthy before you. I am hmm? unskillful in the word of righteousness. Wale hawajafahamu vile Mungu amewafanya watakatifu. Nasema hao ni wachanga katika imani. Always confessing about your sin is not enough. Let the word of God dwell in you. Rich. Sika mepiga nduru. So, verse 14 says, But a strong man belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Wow. I like this one. And I say, my nyama, ni ya wale ambao, wamekoma. Wamefanya nini wakakoma? They explain here. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Wale ambao, them that have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. Their senses, they have exercised to know what is good and what is bad. One may exercise. I think the best place to, to exercise your senses to know good and evil is in the class. When you sit like this. In discipleship class, we are doing the new creation man. And we have realized something. Like this week, there are things we talked. People are shocked. Not only this week, we began the other Friday. And Monday spoke on the same. God says, in righteousness, I will establish you. Chapter 54 of Isaiah verse 14. It says, in righteousness, I will establish you and you will be far from fear. Huh? And I say, Manini, in righteousness will be established and you will be far from fear. In other words, fear will not be what is known of you. You will be far from terror. Terror. You know what terror is? Terrorists. Anything that is terror. It says you will be, in fact, terror will be far. In fact, Jesus says you will be far from oppression. He says, in righteousness, I establish you. And now that you have been established in righteousness, three things will not find you. Number one, fear. Number two, terror. Number three, oppression. What is oppression? Sickness and disease is oppression. If established in righteousness, those three things will be part will not be part of your life, he says. But what are believers struggling with today? The same thing. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. What does that tell you? Every tongue that speaks against you, you shall condemn. Wow. He says, them that eat is strong meat belongs to them that are full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So if you, I, I, let me just give you only that one verse. Not only, not only that one verse. Just go and read chapter number 54 of Isaiah. Verse 14, 17. Ukiona pale, utagundua, mungu amekuwekea jukumu zingine za maisha yako. Jukumu zingine umewekewa. Kwa sababu amekuwezesha 
kwa kukupatia asili impia ya kiumbe kipya you will not be oppressed he says oppression is what happens in our bodies many a times no be conformed against you shall prosper anybody who has spoken against you he says you will condemn yourself but you see when you talk about righteousness that also means you must know enough of the word of god so that you also know whether you're on the right or on the wrong verse 6 chapter 6 verse 1 Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. And I say, I'm going to 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 this week when we are having conference here, we are teaching with our two pastors. What one answer kwa kutubu? Napiga magoti. Baba utusame. Tumefanya makosa. Me, I was just watching. Tunatubu mpaka lini? Tunatubu mpaka lini? Lazima tuachane nayo from dead works and of faith toward Jesus. Lazima tuondoke katika hiyo kazi. Ah, Kiswahili what is it? Huh? Yes, we come out of dead works. When he talks about dead works, he's talking about the works of the old man, not the old man. What we just said, hiyo vitu tatu yenye tano yenye tumeongea. Just tuachane na hizo vitu and then go on to grow. To a channel of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of internal judgment. And this will we do if God permits. Like in all these churches that we are, we have around. What are you doing? At to kianza kongea kuzu baptism. I in I in isawa. We na zema ivi. We na zema ivi. Sasa ni lini tuta koma. When when? Na kama tu jakoma. Marsabi itajabadilika, itabadi, itabaki itu vile hiko. It's painful to have churches 20, 30, 40 years and it's still God not moving in the land. It's painful. Kuna wengine waliamua kubadilika, although sasa kubadilika pia netegemea marifa nye ukonayo. Sometimes I look at Pastor Lai, now it's 40 years since Anze kupreach. The effects of his preaching has made believers more than not believers in Mombasa. From 2% Christian, over 60% today. And of crowd, ya nafanya peke yake yo kazi. Bak ukache, bak ekachu is there. The other day, alikuwa kitu pigia story wakati julienda. Anasema, hakuna mtu anaka, kila mtu anafanya kazi. Mungine watumwa prison, mwende mubiri pale. Mungine high school, mungine primary. Ametembea Tanzania na Western Kenya more than 10 times. Everybody active, going everywhere. Preaching on the street. Wakitoka tu kwa cha achivi, tunasimama kwa njia. Kila umtu wanda ubiri. Na umtu ya kiyokoka, wewe ndiyo utashugulikia yeye. Na pasta atakusaidia. 
They have been doing that for the last 30 years plus. Leo sisi hata kwa kusoma Biblia ni ngumu. Tutafika huko lini? Ukikaa kwa kanisa ya pastor Lai miaka 2 na still unahitaji mtu wa kutembelea kutafute Lai anakufukuza I was listening to him on one teaching kitaka kusikiza nda kutumia akauliza sasa poka ngefa kulisa kutafute nani na tuwache nani na huku wakuna mchezo Utakoma bila kupenda. <laughs> You'll grow by force. And I'm telling you the truth here. This was try, I'm even praying God people not to be added here. It's because kwanza wacha tukamwae. Sisi. Nazima. I am praying God to only get five who can work with me there I am. I already have around two or three. And then I pray God this church to be filled. Because when you have a church that is filled here, you don't have a job. In fact, Kanisa is a job that 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 is a job instead of members going out where you have a job that is Mara ni kwa hiyo nyumba, mara ni kwa hiyo nyumba, mara ni kwa hiyo nyumba. Sasa mpaka lini? Wakati una grow and you go up, you are able to take care of your needs. So we are not really dealing up with you, we are dealing with the people outside church. Please hear me well. Hear me well. Because after finishing this preaching, I will pray God this church to be filled. And you will see they will come. But you see, before they come, to can a program kwa kanisa enye inatusaidia kugrow. To can ayo. In fact, kanisa imefunguliwa kila siku. Every day is open. Every day. I will do my part to the best I can. I speak to you. The grace will come to an end to speak to you about grow. I will move to the next level. If other people come and move with me very fast, praise to God. But my, the reality I must tell you is, you must grow spiritually. You must. It is not an option. But your growth is dependent on you. I will not force you to grow. I will only Hey, do you see the reason as to why we have so many programs here? Kuna makanisa, this week somebody came here from Goa Church. Alikuwa hapa. Na kasema, unujo pastor, huko siyo ni kitu. Na mimi nataka kukua. In fact, she was in the meeting on Saturday the whole day. Nikifundisha huko kwa GGC. And then she came and she bought all the books I have. Then I can yambea, yo conference yako nikikuja, so we, we, we met there. And she told me, Nataka kukoma. Because sipati kitu kama hii penye niko. Kamuambia class hiko kila jioni. Kuja. That is enough. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We bless your name because of your word. Your interest is for our growth that will reach so many souls outside this church to fill them inside here and still to grow them and go out and bring more until the number of the church people coming in increases until the number of disciples increases. Thank you for the grace you have offered us because we have it. You have given us the right ingredient for growth. 
in all areas of our life. And here we are. Even as we listen to your voice, we desire grace to walk in line with what you ask of us. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray.